In this video, I want to briefly discuss UI Alert Controller, and I want to review how you can use UI Alert Controller to kind of quickly and easily get some of the functionality that one used to get uh, with UI Picker View in UI Action Sheet on versions of iOS prior to iOS 8. So on iOS versions prior to iOS 8, it used to be that you could take a UI Picker View, which is the standard scrollable kind of selection view that iOS provides. It's a spinner, looks like a slot machine, and you could stick it in what was called an UI action sheet. And this made it really easy to kind of um, make this uh, control appear from the bottom of the screen. It was really easy to display. Uh, the UI picker would actually display in the same fashion as the iOS keyboard, which is something that people understood. And what's really great, as you can see in this picture, is that instead of asking someone to enter, say, the city they live in, they would tap in this text input box. And instead of giving them a keyboard, you give them a pre um, configured list of items to choose from. Really nice, really easy. But as of iOS 8, uh, you can no longer do this. And I wanted to bring this up in a video lecture because there's a couple of ways you can resolve this issue. Uh, but I wanted to really show you the option that I've chosen, which is kind of a quick trick. So options. Uh, if you still would like this uh, functionality, you can actually still have it. There's not much has changed. It just means that now you need to kind of do one of these options, uh, which would mean either using auto layout and auto layout constraint constants and modifying those to get that same kind of slide onto the screen, slide off the screen uh, interface that users had previously with UI Action Sheet. Uh, second option, you can actually build your own customized UI view controller. And in iOS 8 and above, it's possible to show a modal presentation um, uh, of a view controller over top of a full screen and still kind of see what's underneath it. In other words, the UI modal presentation over full screen option actually gives you the capability to have your uh, top uh, UI view controller um, have some um, alpha channel or some you know uh, transparent area that you could see through into the bottom. So you could use that approach to emulate this uh, same type of interaction. Or if you really only need one column, you can take advantage of the fact that UI alert controls uh, can handle lots and lots and lots of buttons. And actually UI action sheets could too in previous versions of iOS. I just think a lot of people didn't either like the look. Um, so we can actually take advantage of this to go ahead and um, make this work. So let's take a look at the project file and take a look at how this works in the simulator. So I've got an iOS project here that demonstrates the code. Um, and first what we'll do is look at the running simulator. And what you'll notice is I have a button and a label. So if I hit show filter, up from the bottom of the screen comes this large scrollable list. Notice in this case it occupies the entire screen. Uh, if I have less numbers, uh, th this list only scrolls when you have a significant number of items uh, such that they are larger than the um, screen area. So uh, if you only have two or three items in here, uh, this will not scroll. And what happens is when you click on one of these, you end up with that date uh, being displayed in the label. And you could do whatever you want here. Anyway, how does this work? Well, one of the ways that this works is as follows. Let's jump over the code and take a look at that. I've only got one view con main view controller in my project, and most of the important stuff happens in the view did load method. And so uh, I've got outlets at the top of my code, um, one for, sorry, one outlet for my UI label to display my information. Um, I also have a variable to hold onto the UI alert controller that I'm going to create, which I call it my filter view, because uh, I'm you know, basically saying like, hey, I got a list of data, let's filter it by date. Uh, additionally, I'm going to have an array of data that I need to access from a couple methods. So I'm going to store that uh, as well at the class level. And then I have my IB action that happens when the button is pressed. So this is all wired up. And again, you can get this project off of YouTube if you are interested. Uh, sorry, off of GitHub using the link you can find uh, in the description of this YouTube video. So what I do here is I have set up a um, NS array. And let's make a little more make that a little more readable. Uh, so I just have a bunch of things in an NS array, a bunch of strings. This could be objects. They could be whatever you want them to be. I then go ahead and I assign this array to my data variable so that it's available globally. Now here's where um, the really interesting piece of this happens. When you are dealing with a UI picker view, it used to be that you would select items by uh, index. And what I'd still like to do is have that same type of interaction in my code. I still would like the ability to uh, review or, sorry, select items and control them in my code by index because I've got an array. So I want to know if was the item at index zero clicked, was the item at index one clicked, and so on. I want to kind of keep that paradigm. So one of the nice things that you can do here is um, 
set the code up in the following fashion to kind of get this approach. And what you'll notice here is as I kind of make this code a little bit more uh, readable as I'm going to stack those colons so it's a little bit easier to see, is this line here is what I'm using to create the UI alert controller. And I'm going to store that in uh, the variable alert temporarily. And so I instantiate a UI alert controller. I give it the title filter data. Uh, I don't need a message. And I tell the system to use the action sheet style. And now what I want to do is I want to add all of the items in my um, array of strings as buttons to this UI action sheet. And so the way I'm going to do this is loop through all the items in that array. And each time through, a UI alert controller takes instances of UI alert action items. And these, so these UI alert actions are going to be added to that uh, controller so that they can be displayed as buttons. And each item that I add in there needs to have a title, which is going to be the string uh, represented in the um, array. I'm going to tell it to use the action style default style. You can take a look at the docs to see what other options there are. And then each one of these items takes a block. And this block is, um, if you're not too familiar with blocks, but hopefully you are at this point, but it's a good thing to know. Blocks are little bits of executable code that you can pass in. Um, and one of the neat features of a block is that when you create it, blocks are, um, they close over the scope in which they are created. So one of the cool things that you're going to notice is I declared this variable i up here and I started at zero. Why? Because arrays start indexing at the value zero. And so zero is the way I'm going to represent the first item in this array. As I loop through this number of items in my uh, array, I'm going to add one to i each time. And each time through, I'm going to create a new default action. I'm going to add this block, and we'll talk about what this is doing in a second. I'm going to then add it to my alert controller, and then I'm going to increment i. And what this will do is walk through my array and increment the value so I can basically assign an index to item 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, could I put a lot of code in this block? Absolutely. But my goal here is to try and emulate the way that UI action sheets, uh, sorry, UI picker views work. So uh, this idea that I can select items by index uh, makes it a little easier, I guess, if you've got to port some code that already works. So what's happening again? I go through every item in my array. Uh, I create uh, UI alert actions with those items. Uh, I pass in this block of code to execute whenever that item is uh, tapped on, clicked or selected. Uh, I then add it to my alert controller, increment the value of i by 1, and go back up here and start over again. And you'll notice that this method call here, for this method call did select row in alert controller that I've actually written, and we'll look at that in a second, accepts the value i. And each time this is executed and this block is created and passed in, the value of i will correspond with the current value of i in the loop. So the first time through this will be 0, and then 1, and then 2, and then 3, and 4, and so forth, uh, through the entire length of my array. Now, where did this method come from? Well, down here I have a method called did select row in alert controller. And this is a method that I created. Uh, it is the method that get call, gets called whenever one of these buttons is pressed. It accepts as a parameter the index of the row. Where does that index come from? It's actually remembered from this block of code. When i was 0, that parameter uh, that's passed in will be 0. When i is 1, the parameter that will be passed in is 1. Each one of these blocks is its own discrete, unique block of code. And the state of the value of i at each time in that loop is preserved. And so if I click on the first button in this list, the value stored in row will be 0. If I click on the third button in the list, um, well, it's an array. So it would be 2, right? Because the indexes are all off by 1. And all I'm doing at that point is when this uh, method is called is I'm um, getting the object at that index in my array, which is in this case a string, and setting the output label uh, of my text. So in this case, the real um, magic of this code is using this incremented value, using the properties of closures to uh, make sure that I call that method with uh, the value of i being in incremented each time so that it's captured and appropriate. And what it does then is it lets me have this ability to kind of treat the buttons in my UI view controller, um, sorry, in my UI alert controller as items that I can access by index, just like you might access items in a UI picker view by index. And hopefully this is helpful, uh, especially if you're porting older code or you just need a quick and dirty solution to display a bunch of uh, um, a single column of uh, values to a user for use in your app. And hopefully this will be one of the first of many really quick, simple lectures on different tech topics that approach really specific problems. And uh, if you like this, let me know. Thanks.